I'm Jennifer Hambrick with WOSU Public Media, and I am speaking with Remy Wertmeyer, who is just about to begin his first season as artistic director of Ballet Met here in Columbus. He's a multi-award winning dancer and choreographer who has danced around the world, including with the Australian Ballet, the American Ballet Theater, the New York City Ballet, and the Dutch National Ballet, where he served as principal dancer and also as a choreographer. We're going to get to know Remy Workmeyer just a little bit, uh, find out what he has in store for Ballet Met and for the Columbus culture scene, and maybe also talk about some of his other talents uh, in the visual arts, including sculpting and jewelry design and fashion design and costume design. So Remy, it is my pleasure to have you here with me in the performance studio at the WOSU Public Media Headquarters. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. So I imagine you're kind of settling into Columbus these days. How are, how are you kind of finding the city to be? Yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, yeah, it's definitely like a very intense period of getting to know both the company and the city. It's, uh, I like Columbus very much. Yeah, the people are so nice, so inviting, so friendly, so warm. I'm actually living in German Village at the moment, which is great because it's a little bit of Europe in Columbus. Right, right, exactly. It's a, it's a gem here in Columbus. And, and now you, you had been dancing in Amsterdam uh, with the Dutch National Ballet. So how did this most recent move to the United States kind of all come about? Yeah, well, I mean... I, I, I'm coming from Australia and then I did briefly dance with the American Ballet Theatre in New York. So I have worked in America before. And then I went to Europe and I had a big chunk of my uh, professional career was in Europe. And then once I retired from the stage, I was um, redeveloping towards being an artistic director. And then the position of uh, Ballet Met came available and I, they reached out to me. And I thought, what a wonderful company. So I already knew of the company. Mm -hmm. It has a great reputation internationally and we're looking to build on that. Uh, but it has a great reputation as a choreographic company with new works and new creations. So, you know, as a choreographer myself, I thought this this could be a great fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, we'll uh, talk more about kind of your vision for keeping the reputation of Ballet Met sort of ever, ever growing. Uh, we're here in Columbus, of course, some distance away from your home turf. Um, you're a native of Adelaide, Australia. That's where your dance career began. But tell us, if you would, sort of how it began. What, what kind of inspired you to start dancing in the first place? <laughs> well, what inspired me to start dancing was a television show. Um, I was two and a half years old, and there was a dancing fat cat. It was his name, <laughs> Fat Cat. Um, it was a television program where there was ultimately... A man in a suit, in a fat cat suit, and he would dance, and I would dance in front of the TV. And my mother and my grandmother thought, hmm, maybe, maybe we could take him to ballet class. Maybe, you know, we could have a little bit of someone else looking after <laughs> babysitting him at ballet class while I, while they had a lovely coffee at the local cafe. So... That's how it started. That's how it started. Okay, yeah. so you know it, it's 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 not uncommon uh, for a dancer to add choreography to his or her skill set, um, and and I gather that in addition to your passion for dancing, your passion for choreography goes way back, uh, and that from a very young age you were also inclined to make dances uh, of your own as much as you were inclined to sort of just dance. So do dancing and choreography kind of go hand in hand or foot in foot? <laughs> <laughs> with you? Um, with me, they do. I don't know if it's with everyone. I think um, everyone has their different path and mm -hmm. their different uh, ways of, of of seeing art and being an artist. Uh, but for me, yeah, the natural movement from being a dancer to being the choreographer felt um, like a natural fit for me. It almost felt, it, well, it almost feels like, you know, given the story that you just mentioned about uh, kind of dancing around to the television. It almost sounds like you were sort of a choreographer before you were a dancer in a way. <laughs> I think you know, that's maybe a bit of a stretch. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> well, I don't know that there wasn't an audience for what I was doing, but um, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think it's like with my sculpture work and my artwork, I see everything as a, and how I used to be as a dancer. Um, it's about creating a shape, creating a sculpture, a moving sculpture. Same with choreography, balancing bodies on stage and um, patterns and, uh, and then with costume design. It's all for me, it's one image. It's how to mould and shape and create beauty and to express an emotion and a, and a feeling to the, to the audience. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, for me, it felt like the organic way forward. 
You are obviously trained in classical ballet, but there are so many forms and styles of dancing today, maybe always, and you know, all, all the way to and including break dancing, which of course was just a star at the uh, you know Paris Summer Olympic Games. As a choreographer, you know you make new dances, uh, so there's an element of innovation there. So could you talk about innovation? Uh, as an ingredient in your choreography, how you conceive of kind of mixing new ideas into your work and how innovation manifests in your dances? Yeah, well, I think for me, it's all about collaboration. I think that we are greater when we bring our strengths and our capacities together. So, you know, I love to bring my visual art and my choreography and my dance history into my work. But then I also love working with musicians who have different capacities. I mean, I've often created, uh, I've created a couple of pieces for the Dutch National Ballet where it involved a uh, violinist who was also a mover and a, um, she actually, there was even circus performing and fire eating, all sorts of really interesting things for that project. And so I love when people bring their own different talents and we collaborate to build on something to actually create a, a new medium of dance and something exciting and all encompassing, yeah. You uh, mentioned uh, a few minutes ago in this conversation, you know, your kind of um, sort of fire for innovation. We've just kind of talked a little bit about innovation here a moment ago. Could you talk, I guess, about your artistic vision for Ballet Met? I know you want to kind of keep the company's reputation, you know, growing, if you will. Um, um, and presumably innovation will play a role in that. But uh, don't let me put words into your mouth. What do you envision for us here? Yeah, well, I feel that... Um the fact is, is Ballet Met's in a really good place. We have exceptional dancers and we have an exceptional team who's extremely passionate about uh, dance, not only internationally, but with a real focus on the community here in Columbus. So that's, that's, that's our journey and building upon that in ways we can, which is, you know, collaboration, uh, working with different organisations within the community and, and getting our work further into the community, but then also with a real focus on that international aspect of bringing an international audience to us so that we're not only um, building for the community, but we're building for our community and taking that image, that homegrown aesthetic um, capacity out into the world to kind of say, this is what we're doing in Columbus, this is what Columbus is about, and and being proud of that. How do you plan to bring that international audience to us? Yeah, well, I mean, fortunately, I have worked a lot and in many different capacities um, all over the world, and I do have some connections that I will be um, knocking on their doors and finding ways that we can collaborate internationally. I think that when we talk about uh, like Ballet Met 2, for example, it's our, our younger company and, it's, and we're looking to build upon that and build upon its reputation so that it can collaborate with other um, trainee companies mm -hmm. around the world and to, and to access that international circuit of um, young performers. Now, let, let me let me dig a little deeper, if I may. Are, I mean, are you are you sort of envisioning or dreaming about or planning even, uh, you know, overseas tours or what? You know, really, how does this kind it's of international a, thing look? Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be. That's the ambition for uh -huh, sure. Uh -huh. We have to get there, and there's a journey that that will take. So sure. it won't be straight away. We just boom, we do a big international tour. Sure. But we will look at how we can start collaborating, co-producing productions internationally, and then having some of our dancers perform in different festivals and things like this is, is the ultimate goal, building our international reputation and then getting invited as a whole company to those locations. Okay, all right, well, uh, some exciting dreams ahead. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, look, look to see sort of what materializes, that's, that's exciting. Uh, you know, as 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 uh, we mentioned, kind of during uh, near near the start of this conversation, you've also had side careers in the visual arts. Um, you've painted, you've designed jewelry, you've designed costumes, you've served as a runway director at Paris Fashion Week. Uh, so, how did your work in the visual arts come about? Well, actually, funny enough, it was more just I. We were a form of meditation. That's how I started really with my, my paint. I was painting originally. I started with painting as a form of meditation. At the end of the day, work as a principal dancer of a ballet company is very stressful. Mm -hmm. There's lots of demands on you. You are, you know, you are literally the prince on stage and, and you have, uh, have to perform at a very extremely high level um, every night. And I love that, but at the same time, it, it was 
it created a bit of stress. So I, the way, my way of meditating and to kind of calm down was to, to paint and to use my hands and, and my eyes to create um, something that I would hope to be beautiful. Uh, and then that led on from there. People started to see the work and then I, uh, I got invited to do a solo exhibition and then things just kind of built from there. Yeah. I mean, was, you know, since, since you, you spoke earlier in this conversation about how for you dance is really very much like sculpture, like very much like putting together something visual, but, you know, in three dimensions on stage and using human forms. I mean, have you always been drawn to, you know, the visual arts or was this really kind of a certain point in your career you just decided, you know, I need an outlet? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, a little bit of both. I've definitely always been drawn to the visual arts and I've always, um, you know, really enjoyed working with my hands and building things. And so the sculpture really was like the next level that really felt like an incredible um, fit. I really enjoy, really enjoy sculpture. Uh, yeah, so that kind of came across from... Uh, came along, I should say, from needing to meditate. But also during, the sculpture actually came from during COVID. Hmm. During COVID, we had all this time on our hands. So I thought, let's use these hands. Um, and I started sculpting and I started sculpting these masks, which represented all the audience that we weren't, we were no longer performing to. Hmm. So during that time, uh, we had, I think we had two months in, at home, lockdown. And I had, I did one a day to kind of meditate on that day. And at the end of that two months, I had around 60 sculptures, which I put into a work. And then from there, I got a solo exhibition and had to do a lot more, um, and then got a gallery and a, and a um, art agent and things like this, so. Yeah, so interesting. It's, it's so interesting, the the innovation and creativity and originality that has, uh, you know, resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so interesting. I mean, just worldwide. Um, so, so I gather that you, you know, again, you've, you've done some work as a fashion designer, uh, and, and that includes designing ballet costumes. So are we going to have a chance here in Columbus to see some of your costumes? Oh, designs? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. On the schedule for Ballet Met's 2024-25 season are uh, opening October 25th, Dracula, by former Ballet Met artistic director David Nixon, The Nutcracker, a perennial holiday favorite, West Side Story. Uh, that is uh, going to be mounted in collaboration among Ballet Met, the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, Opera Columbus, and Capital, uh, Columbus Association for the Performing Arts. Sleeping Beauty, choreographed by your predecessor here at Ballet Met, Edward Liang. And in June 2025, Black Voices, which will feature... Ulysses Dove's Red Angels and world premieres by Dwight Roden and Jennifer Archibald. Could you talk um, about what excites you, you know, uh, about this lineup and how these works all kind of tie together? Well, I think that uh, Dracula is so exciting because it's such a crowd favorite here in Columbus and it's been performed uh, in Columbus for over two decades, mm -hmm. I think, something like this. Um, so that'll be really exciting for me to get to see it as well because I've never seen it live. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Then, of course, the Nutcracker is wonderful and it brings the community together. But I'm really excited about West Side Story because I'll be choreographing it. Uh -huh. So okay. <laughs> on a personal level, yes. that's really exciting. Nice. Um, and bringing, and once again, the collaboration aspect of that performance. I think that's, there's so much... Um, there's so much to work with there, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then uh, as we head into Sleeping Beauty, which is a beautiful classical ballet, and then Black Voices, it's, it's such a diverse season. I think that everyone is catered to. There's so much um, variety in the programming and in the performances, a lot of crowd favorites, a lot of new creations. So yeah, I'm really excited to be leading the company with this first season, which Edward did put together, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. I, I, was, I, yeah. was, I was assuming <laughs> that I was actually going to ask, yeah. um, given, the, given the timing yes. uh, of, of uh, your arrival. And, you know, as, as I mentioned, uh, two of the ballets on the, current, on the upcoming season um, are uh, uh, created, I, I'll say, by, by David Nixon and uh, Edward Liang, who were um, uh, former um, ballet mode artistic directors. I was about to say, you know, I'm hoping that before long we can add Remy Wortmeier <laughs> to a ballet a ballet met season lineup, but it looks like we're we're already there. Yeah. <laughs> we're really yeah, just we a few weeks away, in a sense, <laughs> right around the corner. So, uh, by way of, I guess, kind of a closing question, maybe your Instagram page uh, oh bears a quote that is attributed to you, and that quote reads, "I believe in the future of ballet." What do you see uh, for the future of ballet? And it's kind of a related question. 
What do you think the role of dance is in the world today? Well, what I see with ballet, so with ballet, we often think of it, when we're talking classical ballet, we often think it's a museum, history, it's, it's dated, it's old fashioned. We love to go there, it's beautiful, but it's old fashioned, you know. And I don't see that. I think ballet, ballet is the technique of ballet is a series of steps. They're timeless. It's how we put them into stories. And yes, it's wonderful to have classical fairy tales. I think it's really important and they're beautiful and we should be able to escape into a world, into otherworldliness uh, when we go to an opera house and to see a ballet. But I also think we can look at Look, looking towards stories that are relevant to today and, and telling uh, our, our stories that really impact us as human beings. And that can also be done through fairy tales, but with a different approach. So I think that the ballet is not old fashioned and I believe in the future of ballet because I believe that it's a, it's a vehicle to tell stories that are relevant to the human being and to the human condition. As far as ballet as a... Um, Oh, what was your second part of the question? I'm uh, sorry. Uh, you know, wait, what what do you think uh, the the role of dance in the world today is? Well, I think it has many um, many roles. I mean, you definitely it is escapism from our everyday um, lives, which can sometimes be burdensome. Bur is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and you know, they, you know, it's a way of escaping all that, but it's also a way to reflect on our lives and to be able to guide our our community to be, you know, uh, kind, to be supportive of one another. And I think that the beauty of dance is has the capacity to to heal people and to bring people together. Well, you know, it's always amazing to me, you know, to 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 go to the ballet and see what seem to be superhuman feats of athleticism, <laughs> but but also superhuman feats of just kind of beautiful movement, you know? And 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 I have in a way kind of this a similar a similar type of experience um when I view an incredible sports athlete, you know, uh who who has trained and practiced for years um in in a in a you know a very an extremely, extremely physical uh and, and demanding sport. And just has all of the skill and coordination, you know, ready, ready to go. Uh, and so, when you when you add to that this storytelling dimension that dance, that good dancing, I think brings with it, then you get something that really is just kind of a powerhouse, right? Definitely. You know, uh, you get something that is is virtuosically exhilarating, but also very, very relatable because humans relate to each other through their stories. And, yeah. Well, I think that my mum used to always say she she was always interested in any kind of sports or dance or theatre at an elite level because I think anything that to get to an elite level in any sport, in, in, in art, in dance, in whatever it may be, it takes so much determination, so much pa passion. And I think that's really inspiring. I think that's what's beautiful. I get to work with these inspiring dancers on a daily basis who are pushing to be their very best selves. I mean, what more could you want? It's wonderful. And then to bring that to an audience, I think it's just, it's exciting. And, and I'm so great, grateful to be a part of it.